Good morning, everyone. Arnold here, and welcome to a new series for the channel, uh, The Magical History Tour. Uh, these videos are going to be a mixture of my hobby projects, painting guides, and kind of some of my research into uh, the history of some of the stuff that I do kind of on the side of the regular content that you see on the channel. Uh, I'm going to be starting a new project today. It's one of the most popular historical periods for wargaming, but one which I'm actually quite unfamiliar with, and it's uh, the Napoleonic Wars. Um, I've been partly inspired to start this by the trailer for the new Ridley Scott movie Napoleon, um, but I've also been enjoying finding out more about Napoleonic Wars recently, some videos on YouTube that I've been uh, watching, and um, of course uh, other channels like Little Wars TV that I watch. Um, they recently announced they were going to be doing a big campaign set in the Napoleonic period, so that's kind of uh, got my interest into this going. Um, for my own project, I've decided that I'm going to create uh, a French army under Napoleon's command in 1814. So um, this is a, a kind of interesting uh, period for the Napoleonic Wars. Uh, France very much on the back foot here. The kind of time where they were masters of Europe is now over. They've been forced out of Germany in the previous year, and Napoleon is now left with just a tiny army to defend northern France and Paris. Um, against the odds, in early 1814, he manages to win a string of battles during what's called the Six Days Campaign for historians. Um, he's able to essentially defeat a Prussian and Russian army twice the size of his own force um, and force them into retreat with uh, quite heavy casualties during a few engagements. Um, and then he's able to force another large army of Austrians and some of the German states at the time to retreat along the Seine as well. Um, so it's meant to be very, very impressive, uh, but ultimately he he can't really prevent what's uh, going to be inevitable. Um, he just doesn't have the resources, his army isn't large enough, and ultimately he has too many enemies, and the British basically just... Um, have so much money and uh, power influence against him in sort of convincing everyone in Europe to keep going against France that he's unable to actually uh, do anything. So um, he finally fights his battle, the Battle of Arcis Sob, which is, um, I've probably butchered that name as well, but it's, it's not really conclusive, but essentially Napoleon isn't able to get a clear victory. He's forced to retreat against the much larger army that he was facing. Um, he decides that he's going to try and cut the supply routes for these armies invading France, but he's essentially unable to do it. And there's various political kind of things which we might see as um, him being uh, kind of betrayed. But ultimately, France basically is just unwilling now to um, put up with this fight. And so Paris is taken by the coalition forces and Napoleon ends up abdicating. He will return, of course, in 1815, but for now, Napoleon is no longer Emperor of France. Now, for this force, um, I'm going to be using the epic Waterloo miniatures from Warlord Games. Um, I'm aware that among some of the more sort of hardcore Napoleonic gamers, uh, these aren't universally popular miniatures, um, but for a beginner like myself in this kind of um, setting, I think that they're really good value, they're really nice miniatures, and um, I'm aware that the miniature scale doesn't really kind of fit in with the traditional kind of like 15 mil stuff, um, but I, I just felt like they were the best option to start out. And also I did have a sprue that I got free with a copy of War Games Illustrated a while ago, so it was kind of an easy way for me to get started as well when um, I initially was sort of getting excited about starting this period. Um, the aim for this then is I'm not really going after 100% accuracy with the uniforms, I'm going to be as close as possible, but I, I'm not an expert enough in this to get all of the sort of correct detailing for the regiments and stuff, so there might be some minor um, issues, but I don't think it'll be too much of an issue at 13 mil, to be honest. Um, the first minis I decided to tackle were uh, partly just because I you know, actually had them, but um, some Dragoons. Um, so what I started off doing was a, a spray can of black, um, I use pretty much all Games Workshop paints, um, not really for any reason other than I just like them. I have tried other paints, but um, yeah, all of the paints for this were Games Workshop. Um, and after I'd uh, spray painted the black, let it dry, I then came back with a dry brush of white over the top. Any white will do. 
And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be slap chop painting these. Um, normally slap chop, you use a kind of gray dry brush, or in my case, I usually spray paint models gray and then wipe dry brush over the top. But I wanted a bit more contrast for a smaller miniature, just so that the kind of uh, mod would uh, look a bit more natural at this smaller scale. I didn't want it to be too colorful. I wanted to leave some black kind of in areas to help define different parts of the mod tool. So I didn't actually use any gray in this one. Once this was all done, um, I started with the horses just because they were the biggest area. I used Gore Grunter Fur, a contrast paint on this particular one. I also used some Cyborg Brown on other horses as well to get a bit of variation for the unit. Um, whilst I'm painting on the contrast, by the way, I'm also painting areas which are essentially still the black paint, just to help it blends and kind of create the natural transition between the lighter and darker areas of uh, the various different textures on the model. So even areas which were still completely black still got covered by the contrast here. Next up, I hit one of the other large areas of colour on the model. Um, I used Dark Angel's Green, another contrast paint on the coat and also the saddle cloth. Uh, the Dragoons are interestingly kind of one of the few French units that didn't have a blue uniform. Um, so these will stand out a little bit from the rest of the army, which will mostly be predominantly blue. Uh, but in this case, they get these nice dark green uniforms. After this, I came in with Bla uh, Blood Angels Red to pick out some of the red detailing on the uniform. Um, this is kind of the point where I started then switching over as well into some regular paints so dawnstone which is a, a layer paint i think was used to, to then paint on the light gray for the trousers and that's just because uh, in terms of coverage I, I think the contrast paints not so good on the kind of uh, white to gray colors um, they don't really have this color specifically so um switched over there now there are quite a few white details in the uniform um, I don't really use pure white paints. Instead, I use an off-white. So in this case, I use something called Celestric Grey. And if you actually look in the uh, little bottle or on the uh, Games Workshop web store where it's sold, um, it doesn't look white at all. But when you actually paint it on the miniatures, um, you do get this kind of really smooth white effect. And it has much better coverage, I find, than an actual white. So I pretty much always universally use this for anything which is kind of white in, in uh, quotation marks. Um, I then painted on the black details, so the harness, the scabbard, the hooves, and the hat. I used the contrast paint Black Legion. Um, this is a very dark black. You don't really actually get that much contrast. Um, but what it's really good at is you don't need to thin it out, and it will pretty much cover any other colour. So I could afford to be a little bit messy coming up to this point. It just meant that I had to be careful to be neat on this bit, because it will make uh, quite a dark black on any colour and it dries quite quickly as well. But it's really good for this kind of work. Uh, next up, I picked out the musket uh, with Saigor Brown. Uh, and later on, I added some silver detailing to this as well, but you might not necessarily see it that clearly in the uh, photos. Now, this is kind of an interesting thing for the Dragoons because Dragoons were traditionally, when they were kind of first created, uh, mounted infantry. So in the kind of centuries preceding the Napoleonic Wars, you would ride your horse around, get off the horse. Someone would make sure, of course, that they were, you know, not going to run away whilst you then could get your musket out, shoot, and then you could remount your horse uh, to ride away. So that's the kind of thing that you'd see during something like the English Civil War. Um, but by the time of the Napoleonic Wars, they're not really used like this. They could still be. Um, but actually, they're used as regular cavalry as well. So um, for Napoleon's army, they're equipped almost as a kind of mixture between light and heavy cavalry. And their role becomes a bit of a mixture. Sometimes they might just be used as cavalry. Sometimes they might be used in a way that is closer to what they were originally designed for. Um, what they did provide, though, was flexibility to commanders. They were able to do various different things. They could be used as light cavalry. They could also be used as kind of something close to heavy cavalry. So flexibility in this kind of middle cavalry, as uh, people sometimes call it, was useful for commanders. The last things to do then in terms of the painting, uh, there were some metal details to pick out. So I used Retributor armor for the gold. So things like the little helmet there and also uh, for the sword. 
And then for the uh, silver car, I used Iron Hands Steel. And so that finished off most of the model. The last thing to do was just to pick out the face. So I used Bugman's Glow on this one. Uh, I also ended up using Cadian Flesh Tone on some of the others so that they would have a bit of a variation in skin tone uh, as well. The last thing then, it's not really part of the model, but just because it's there and you have to make sure it fits in with the base, there's the little plastic tabs that they're on. Um, I just painted these with Dryad Bark. It's a nice dark brown. And it just helps it to fit in with the basing and make it kind of less obvious that that tab is there. Once I got all of the unit painted up then, I glued them onto their base. And then what I did was I used some Sterling Mud, which is a texture paint. Um, just slapped that onto the bottom where the gaps were in between the tabs. Um, I really like the texture paints the Games Workshop make. Um, I think they are worth the money. I'm aware that, you know, you could just PVA glue some sand on paint it, but I think they just make it a lot easier. And I think that the results you get look, in my opinion, or at least it, from what I've experimented, I, I like the way it looks. Um, so let that dry, set it aside. And then what I do is I come back with a quick dry brush of Carrick Stone over some areas, just helps to break up the brown, make it less kind of uniform. And then it's time to apply some grass. So all I did here was I popped on some splodges of PVA, tried to make it kind of um, rough, different shapes and sizes, not covering the whole thing. And then I used some of this uh, Cromlet coarse turf, and I applied that over most patches. And then I also grabbed a little bit of uh, clump foliage of a slightly different color and placed that as well. Um, between this and static grass, I tend to actually prefer this. Um, I don't know why, but I just think it looks a little bit more grassy. The static grass, I think, sometimes makes it look a little bit more like a model, if that makes sense. Um, and I, I thought the the scaling with the Epic Scale miniatures really kind of suited this um, coarse turf there. Final thing to do then is just the rim of the base. Uh, I used XV88 for this. Um, I decided that the light brown was going to suit this better than the black. And so there we go. This is the uh, finished unit and it's all done. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Uh, drop a like if you have. If you're interested in seeing more of this, um, comment below, let me know and um, consider subscribing. Um, this series might end up being kind of random stuff. Um, I don't know if you'll ever see a completed army because I, I tend to just flip between things that I'm interested in. But um, yeah, it'd be good to know if people are interested in seeing more. And um, I'll catch you all later.